So we said that there's no question. Everyone sure? Yeah. Sure. Okay. So let's start. What the Agatha tell us, we was, uh, I don't know what page are you, but I'll tell you where we are. We was in a story that the sages get together in Nebra. Nebra. That's where we ended. Let's move a little bit forward. The next verse speak about Rabbi Lazar ben Azariah. And Rabbi Lazar ben Azariah says something very interesting. Steve, will you read for us? Will you say it loudly? It happened that Rabbi Lazar and Rabbi No, 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 after. Rabbi Lazar ben Azariah. One more, because that we said already. Loud, loud, loud. I am like a 70 year old man, but I could not succeed in having the exodus from Egypt mentioned every night. And so the Zoma expounded it. In order that you may remember the day you left Egypt all the days of your life, the phrase the days of your life would have indicated only the days. The addition of the word all includes the night as well. But the sages declare that the days of your life will mean only the present world. The addition of all includes the, the era of Mashiach. Okay. So the question that, I don't know, when you read it, did you ever ask yourself, look what Rabbi Eliezer say. Rabbi Eliezer say, I'm like a man of 70. A man of 70. If I ask anyone here, you want to tell me that you don't know your age? Can it happen that none of us know our age? I mean, we're reading the Agada every year. Did we ever take notice of that? I'm like a man of 70. What, you don't know your age? What's happening here? Did you ask yourself? Anyone can help me? Yeah, who can help me? He was 18 years old. Yes. And he appointed the head of the... He was appointed as the Avbedin. The Nasi, sorry. The Nasi, the president. Yes. Okay, so I'm, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring the Gemara and I will explain what you're saying. Because what you say is 100%, but there's few things that I need to polish. You know what I'm saying? So you come into the Rehba, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so let me explain to you what's happening. Where is everyone? Tonight is very shvach. I see everyone. Are they cleaning? They're going to shop. They're going to kosher world. Okay. So, so let's understand. So, Rabbi Lazar ben Azariah say, I'm like a man of 70. I'm going to bring two commentaries, and if you want to write it to say it on a certain night, keep it in mind. So, it say like this. Come in, come in, come in, come in. So, what does it mean, I'm like a man of 70? The Gemara in Masechet Brachot. Where is the story come? Hazal tell us the Gemara Masechet Brachot, page 27, folio 2. Hazal tell us what's happened. Rabban Gamliel was the Nasi of Israel. What does it mean, Nasi? In the olden day, they have the president and the Avbedin. The president was the higher level. And that's called the Nasi. And Avbedin was below him. And they have a dispute with the president and Hazal decide to move him, the Gemara tells us. And they was looking all around in the Bet Midrash who to choose that's going to be suitable to take the position of the Nasi of Israel. It's not a simple position. Nasi, it's not what we see today, the president of the shul, Lehavdi. <laughs> Nasi, it's not, it's not what we call in this place Avbedin. It's a very high authority. You understand what I'm saying? Everything got through him. There is no psak halacha that can be in Paskin without him. Everyone has to consult with him. So what's happened? Hazal decides, the Gemara tell us, to move Rabban Gamliel from the position. 
and they decide who gonna take the place, Rabbi Lazar ben Azaria. The only problem, Rabbi Lazar ben Azaria was only 18 years old. And now, it's not really suitable for 18 years old to pask in halachot, especially when you have a black beard. In those days, no one used to shave. So, there is two opinions that Hazal bring in. Number one, that Rabban Gamliel, that now is not there, because he was the oldest, and he was the Nasi, come Rabbi Lazar ben Azariah, he's a young man. He davened that night to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu make a miracle, and grown on his beard 18 rows of gray hair, white beard. That's one opinion. <coughs> That's the Gemara. I saw another opinion that bring the Rambam. The Rambam, Rabbi Moshe ben Nachman. That's the Nachmanah. And, uh, no, Rabbi Moshe ben Maimon, sorry, the Maimonite. Sorry, the Maimonite, a correct master. And Rabbi Moshe ben Maimon say something extraordinary. You know what happened that night? Rabbi Lazar ben Azaria knew that he gonna be appointed the next morning to become the Nasi. And he was worried. You know, when they appoint you as a rabbi, you think it's a simple, because you have to have psak alachot, you have to learn, you have to know, you have to be knowledge. He studied all night. And because he studied so hard, said the Rambam, miracle happened, and he become old. And he looked like a person of 70 years old. That means from study so hard, he had the hair turned to gray, and what's happened, he looked like a person of 70 years old. That said the Rambam. Why I brought Dafka the Rambam? It's not so simple. Listen what the grandson of the Rambam said. The grandson and the son, Rabbi Avraham, that was the son of the Rambam, say like this, the same thing happened with the Rambam. The Rambam was a young man, and all night he was studying, from studying so hard and focusing, his hair turned gray. And he said, the same thing happened with my grandfather. That's why he brought that commentary. Because when a person learned hard, he looked much older. Because he focused. And the Torah take all the string of a human being. So he said, Not that he didn't know the age, Rabbi Lazar ben Azariah. He knew exactly what his age. He said, I look like 70 years old. You know why? For two reasons. Number one, because he studied so hard, so his hair turned to gray. Number two, opinion of the sages, that miracle happened, because he didn't want to stand up and pask in alachon and look like a young man that pask in alachon for the congregation. So now we understand, when we read the Agada, we have a bit, of, a bit of an idea what happened. I would like to move on to the next verse, and the next verse speak about the four kids. Keneged Arba Banim. Yes, Steve. Yeah, sure. Give it to me. Give me the name. Le'ilui Nishmat Itzhak Ben Heshel. Nishmatot Yetzura B'Tzurahim. Shabbos. Shabbos. I get used to ready to the Shaurim on Shabbos. I get used to the Shaurim on Shabbos, you know. See, I'm getting old. So we're speaking now about the fourth son. And what's happening here with the fourth son? And look what it says. Hacham ma'u omer. It says that what is a wise man say? That's hacham. Then it says, rasha ma'u omer. A wicked person, what is he say? And then it says, tam ma'u omer. How would you say tam in English? How would you? The simple. Okay, the simple son, what is he say? And the question that the Mefarshim ask, why did they say ma hu omer? What does he say? What difference does it make? Why didn't say hacham omer, rasha omer, tam omer? Why does they have to say hazal when they wrote the Agada? Why did they have to say, what is the wise man say? What is the wicked son say? What is the simple son say? Why is it so important 
what he says. Did you understand the question, Rabotai? Any answers? I mean, we're reading it every Pesach. Do we understand what we're reading? And what our sages try to give us a message here. There's a very important message. Menachem, can you help me? No. No, no. okay. Yes, Philip. Oh, you can help me, Baruch Hashem. At the present, Nahon? But if I say, the Hakam say, he said now. No, but that's what he said. Now it's. No. Hakam Omer. Omer is all the time. That means. Hakam, if I say that the, the wise men say, he said it all the time. It doesn't mean if it was yesterday, it was today, and it will be tomorrow. No, 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 no. Hakam say, all the time. But here he say, Ma Omer. What is he saying? Do you understand the question? It's very important to understand that word, and especially didn't give you a chance to read, because the key word is hacham <coughs> ma'omer. What does he say? What is Hazal trying to teach us here? And look again. They brought the fourth son. Awards the fourth kind of people that there is in Jewish religion. There is the wise men, those the rabbonim. People that they're wise, they know Torah. Then they have the wicked that don't want to hear, don't want to do, not interested. Then they have that the simple one. It's not that he doesn't want to know. Unfortunately, he was so busy, he didn't have time to study. And then there is Sheino Yodeh Alishon, the Nebuch, that's going to ask Shem. But what we have to understand again, let's go back. What is those? Ma'omer, that's the question. Okay, so I will explain. So Hazal explained to us something extraordinary. Listen to what the commentary say. He say, if you see a person that's going to visit, let's take a person going to visit Eretz Israel, the land of Israel. So some person will come back and he say, you know what? I saw the beautiful country, I toured it, I enjoyed it, I got Kedusha. I've gone to the Kotel, I've gone to Marat HaMachpela, I've gone to see that rabbi, I've gone to see that rabbi, I've got a blessing. You hear from here, what does he say? What is he talking about? He's talking about Yiddishka. He's talking about mitzvot. That's what he's interested in. But if you take other person that go to Eretz Israel, he'll tell you, oh, I saw it's a beautiful country, it's very advanced, it's very sophisticated, the high tech is beyond understanding. You know that he is interesting about what? High tech. You speak to other person. What did you saw in Israel? Oh, the soccer team, the sport, the university. You learn from that what is he interested in. And on and on and on. And you can connect it to a daily life. Some people will speak to you. All they're interested about sports, so they speak about the cricket. Or they speak about the rugby. Other people will speak to you about food, because he loves food, he loves to eat. Other people speak to you about jolly. Everyone with what is interested. Other person will tell you, look, that's what I study, I done mitzvot, I done hesed, I love to help people. You know what I'm saying? So the key word, what is he say? Ma'u Omer. It's come to teach us something very important. Hazal tell us, when you're listening to someone talking, and you see what is he interested about, that's what he is. If a person talk about Yiddishkeit, love, he's interested, you know that, that's what he love. But if a person talk to you all day, you know, I've gone to this restaurant, I spend in that coffee shop. I've gone for shopping here. You know that they're not interested about Yiddishka. They're interested about food. That's all what worry for them. And then, if you see a person that speaks about sport, all he's interested about, sport. So Hazal come and tell us, you want to know, you want to know the character trait of every human being? Talk to him. And see what he prays. 
If he prays Yiddishkeit, he prays Rabbonim, you know that he love his Neshama Go, he love Yiddishkeit. But if you see a wicked person, that he prays who? The crooks. Baruch Hashem, no one here prays Putin, huh? You know what I'm saying? It's a big crook. You know about Putin? Did you hear about Vladimir Putin? No? Because you're only interesting about Zuma. That's the problem in this country. Leave <laughs> Zuma alone. Give him a chance. He's also a gangster. You know what I'm saying? But Vladimir Putin teach him. I'm just joking. <laughs> the idea here is, Rabotai, is Hazal come to teach us something very important. Our sages that wrote the Agada come to tell us, you want to judge a person by character trait? See what he's talking about. What is he interested about? That's how we judge. And that's what the Agada come to teach us. You want to check who's a hacham? You want to check who's a wicked? Who's that person? That is a simple person. And who's the nebuch? Listen to what they're asking. Look what they're talking. That's how you judge them. Can we move on? And now I'm going to skip quite a bit in Agada. And we're going to go to Lavan. Lavan the Eremite. Tell me if you all find it. I'm going to read it in Hebrew and then we're going to move to English. Tell Lemad, ma bikesh Lavan Arami laasot le Yaakov Avinu. No man, you find it? No, not yet. Not yet. Hi, uh, Menachem, you find it. Will you read for us loud? Go and learn what Laban the Aramean attempted to do to our father Jacob. Okay, very simple. We read it every year, Rabotai. What's the connection of Laban? You know who was Laban? Who was Laban? Father. Huh? Father. Our father. grandfather. Laban was our grandfather. Doc. You remember that? I'll tell you how. Who was our grandfather from the side of Yosef? Yaakov Avinu. Nachon? Nachon? You all agree with me? Baruch Hashem. Who was the other grandfather? Who was the father of Rahel and Leah? Lavan, the Eremite. Another grandfather like this? And <laughs> we in Chorus. <laughs> So let's understand. So what's the connection of our grandfather, Lavan? His uncle. Huh? Steve, let's go backwards. Let's, let's press stop. Pause. You remember Yaakov Avinu have to run away to where? To Aram. Okay? There he stay in the house of who? Lavan, Nachon. We, the children of Yaakov Avinu, Nachon. Nachon, you agree with me? Who was our mothers? Rachel and Leah, Nachon. Nachon, you agree with me, Baruch Hashem. Who was their father? Lavan, it's our grandfather. This God will never have any more grandfather like this. <laughs> but the question is, what is Lavan connected to the exodus of Egypt? Did you ask yourself? Why is our sages bring Lavan to the Agada? Any ideas? Steve, help me. I need your help. <laughs> okay. Sorry? Yes, yes. He wanted, he wanted to, to, to try and assimilate the Jew, the Yaakov into his own environment. He, he tried to assimilate? Yaakov and, and, and the whole family into, into his... Uh, that's on the pshat of the Dvarim. Yeah. That's what the Haggadah said. That he tried to conquer any Yiddish guy that we have, that Yaakov Avinu have. And if Yaakov Avinu, the father, is going to lose it, obviously the children will never have it. That's the pshat of the dvari. But there is a deeper meaning to it. Listen to what Hazal said. And it's go like this. 
We all know that <laughs> Yaakov Avinu was supposed to marry Rahel. You agree with me? But Lavan the Aramite, and if you change the word Lavan Arami in Hebrew, you change the word around, it's become Lavan Aramai. What it mean, Ramai? The crook. He was a crook. We have a grandfather that was a crook. And you remember how the Agada start? The Agada never hide anything. Mithila of De Avoda Zara Ayu At the beginning, our fathers was idol worshippers. It's come to teach us something very important. That if you've done something wrong, you can't hide it. You can correct it. Because when you hide it, you'll never correct it. So our change has come to tell us, look at your past and look today where you are. Why is it? You remember on Shabbos and Yeshua, I explained something that a place that the person that was doing Averot and suddenly he done tshuva. Everyone understand me? What does it mean to do tshuva? Do you understand? A person that done tshuva, Yafa, you understand me? Okay, if you don't understand, please stop. A righteous person can't reach to his level. How can you say that? All of his life he never sinned. This person have a job, sin, whatever you want to call it, going to McDonald's, to Las Vegas, wherever you want to name it. I don't know what else there is, Mauritius, whatever. <laughs> huh? <laughs> now, I don't want to go worse. <laughs> the, the, those, I'm sensitized. You know? I don't want to tell you all the worst thing. I don't want to say going to, to Cape Town. You know? <laughs> no, no, really, let, let's be serious. How can it be that suddenly, one day, he changed, he's become Hoser Bichuva, even a righteous man that all of his life never sinned. We have the 120, they in Gan Eden, the one is lower, the one is a higher. But I understand one thing. Akadosh Baruch Hu love his children. He's our father. The same like we love our kids. And if our kids done something wrong, and then they come and regret, Akadosh Baruch Hu loved them more than anyone. Akadosh Baruch Hu loved anyone that do tshuva. No matter what you've done, Akadosh Baruch Hu wants you. And if you do one step, Akadosh Baruch Hu will open for you a door the size of a hole. Just come towards me. Kadosh Baruch Hu wants you. And Hazal tell us something very extraordinary. What does it mean? If you want to appoint a rabbi to a congregation, a chief rabbi, not a chief rabbi like we have here, because a chief rabbi in South Africa is more like, um, what do you call it? This? Sorry? It is an administrator, you know. But in Israel, the chief rabbi is a different. Not that Hasb Shalom um, have something against our chief rabbis doing a wonderful work. But to appoint someone in a high position, Hazal tell us you have to choose a rabbi that sin. <coughs> Did you hear that, Dovi? A rabbi that sin. Why? That if one day he gonna forget where he come from. You said to me, Pasop, Pasop. You know in Yiddish we say Pasop. You remember where you was. Put your arrogancy underneath the carpet. So Akadosh Baruch Hu love those that doing tshuva. What does that have to do with Lavan, Rabota? What is all of this introduction and everything? Lavan Arasha, our grandfather, Hazal tell us, don't forget that he was your grandfather. He was a wicked person. And we mustn't hide that. And your forefathers, 
fourth forefathers was idol worshippers. You can't run from it. You can only correct. We all human being. We all make mistake, and we have to learn from mistake. That's the hope. So what does that have to do with Lavan? Lavan spoke Rahel with Leah. You remember? Hazal tell us something extraordinary. You know who was supposed to bring the 12 tribes? Rahel. And if Rahel will bring the 12 tribes, Yosef will be the oldest. Nahon? You agree with me? Baruch Hashem. And if Yosef will be the oldest, none of what's happened will happen. What's happened? We know that Yaakov Avinu given a striped garment to Yaakov, to Yosef. And because of that, the brother was jealous. And his brother was jealous. But if he was the oldest, no one jealous of the oldest because the oldest always deserve more. It's halacha. Nachon, Stephen? Baruch Hashem. So if he deserves more, no one will be jealous. No one will serve yourself as a slave. The brother didn't have to go to Egypt. We wouldn't have to go to slavery. We wouldn't have to be in exile for 400 years. It's come to teach us something extraordinary, Rabotai. You know why we're in exile? You know why we're going to slavery? Because Lavan Rasha. Because all the Agada, it's because. Why are we going to slavery? Because. Because. Lavan. Lavan swapped Rahel with Leah. And if he swapped Rahel with Leah, that's what's happened. The jealousy. And from the jealousy, it's gone onward until we got to Egypt. Any question? I'll stop here before I continue. That severe pain for that, Rabbi. Huh? Severe pain that our people... Suffered. It's not our people. It's our grandfather. Well, I meant... Lavan is our grandfather. You know? We have to remember we have a wicked grandfather, a crook. Lavanis was our grandfather. Yes, Stephen. I can't hear. Okay, so I will explain. The exile was 400 years, Rabotai. The exile of the Jewish people in Egypt was 400 years. The hard slavery was 210 years. But wait, I don't understand. In Brit Ben Abetarim, how you say the covenant of Brit Ben Abetarim? Huh? Called the covenant of pieces. Okay. So in Brit Ben Abetarim, Hakadosh Baruch Hu told Abraham Avinu that the Jewish people will be the Eretz Lo Lai in 400 years. Nahon. So how come that we was in slavery only 210 years? Not that Hasbi Shalom have something against that. It shouldn't be, but why? So because it belongs to Agada, I have to explain. Because we been promised that we're going to go to slavery. But when it says, what it means, avoda kasha v'parech? Hard work. And slavery. Why? If it's slavery, it's hard work. If it's hard work, it's slavery. Why do you have to tell me these two words? Because there is a secret here. What was the secret? That we were supposed to be in slavery. But in hard work, that wasn't part of the deal. And what does it mean? Rabotai, we have to understand. The word parech in Hebrew if you split the word to two, it's become pe rach. Pe is a mouse. Rach is a soft. Is a soft mouse. The way that the Egyptian convinced us to come to slavery with a smooth mouse. But first they tell us, come and help us to build cities. We need your help. We need your Yiddish cop. That's Pharaoh. 
Once that they wrote everyone, who's the engineer, who's the builder, how much bricks you can do a day, now the game is changed. They put us to slavery. So what does that have to do with hard work and slavery? That they used to change the job, they used to change the job of a man to a woman, and a woman used to do a man's job. What does it mean? Can you imagine, Robotai, to wake up in the middle of the night, the baby crying? Go breastfeed. Now today we have a microwave, we have all the ideas, and those days they didn't. And after a hard day of slavery, they used to make the men change their nappies. They didn't have nappies of today. I don't know if you remember, when I was a little boy, <laughs> you remember those nappies <laughs> that you have to wash? Mm -hmm. Maureen, you're laughing, huh? You remember that very well, huh? <laughs> so imagine those. So they changed the jobs. A job of a man, a physical job, they give it to the woman. People gone mad. Can you see a man cooking? Can you see a man washing the floor, doing all the housework? Not has shalom that I come to degrade the woman. But it's not for us. I mean, uh, some of us have to do that, but it's a very hard job. I did that in the army. We all done it in the army. You know, in Israel, they do it 24-7. And I tell you the secret now. It's Pesach now. Where's all the men? Where's all the men? Baruch Hashem, no one put his finger, so we all down to us. Rabotai, we all have to help the wife to wash dishes. Now that she's preparing, she works very hard. We have to give the respect to our wife. It's not simple. They work very hard to prepare. And I'll tell you what the Ramban Paskan, it's not belong to the show, but I think that it's very important. The Ramban Paskan that you should buy a present to the wife. Where's, uh, where's Liron? Liron, Liron, Liron. Here's Liron. Liron and me is studying almost every night. You know, after that, we're studying for three quarters of an hour, half, to, uh, half an hour, we have a Havruta. And I said to Liron the other day, you must buy your wife a present. He said, but my wife doesn't like presents. Nahon, Liron, that was your word to me. I said, Rabotai, the present, it's not necessary, the bottle of perfume or the dress. You don't have to spend a lot of money. If she want a dress, go and buy a dress. But if you come, Rabotai, you don't have to buy a big bunch of flowers. One rose. You change the day for it. My wife, thank you for all the hard work. That's all. You agree with me, Doc? You're going to do that? Baruch yep. <laughs> Hashem. Okay, so we learn. <laughs> so we learn what's the connection between Lavan to the Agada. That all the reason that we've gone to Egypt is because our wicked grandfather. That he swapped Rahel with Leah. Let's move on. And now I'm going to move to where it says that Akadosh Baruch Hu actually gone to Egypt. Where is it? Let me just find it. Bloom, 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 bloom. Okay. ועברתי בארץ מצרים, אני ולא מלאך. You find it? Philip, you find it? I want you to read it in English. Please, help me. ועברתי בארץ מצרים. Sorry? What did you say, Philip? You find it? 
ויוציאנו אדוני ממצרים, לא על ידי מלאך, נכון? That's what it's said Yeah. You find it? Who find it? Can read loud, no? Come on. Hashem brought us out of Egypt to the mighty hand of an outstretch arm of grace. Hashem brought us out of Egypt, not, not through an angel, not through a seraph, not through a messenger, but the Holy One, blessed be He in His glory. Himself, as it says, I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night. I will slay all the firstborn in the land of Egypt from man to beast. And upon the, upon the gods of Egypt will I execute judgment. I, Hashem. Yeah, continue. I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night, and no angel. I will slay all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, I and no seraph. And upon all the gods of Egypt will I execute judgment, I and no messenger. I, Hashem. And I, Hashem, it is, and no other. Okay, so there is a question. If you read the Agada, I don't know if you take notice what we read now. How many times Hazal tell us that HaKadosh Baruch Hu say that he gonna bring the plague of the firstborn, him and no angel? But if you say once, I understand. Why does it have to repeat? Did you ask yourself? If you say that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gonna bring the plague of the firstborn, obviously it's not an angel. Okay, so you say HaKadosh Baruch Hu have servant, but here HaKadosh Baruch Hu say number of times, he gonna bring the plague, no other angel. Why does he have to repeat it so many times? Do you ask yourself? Yeah. Steve, can you help me? So, not today. No, okay, not today. So I'll help you today. Yeah. Would you mind if I help you? I'll help you. So, it's Hazal explained that here there is a message for us. And there is a very important message to remember. The plague of the firstborn, where it was, the night that Bnei Israel left Egypt, the 15th of Nisan, Nachon? What happened there? On that night, Akadosh Baruch Hu said, I'm going to bring that plague. I'm going to kill every firstborn in Egypt. By the way, the plague wasn't only in Egypt. Every Egyptian that was in holiday, if he decided to go to Las Vegas to gamble, <laughs> he died on a casino, <laughs> on a machine. Wherever was, wherever was Egyptian, he gone to Mauritius, he was thinking that he's going to have a holiday, Akadosh Baruch Hu had a surprise for him. And that night, Kadosh Baruch Hu killed the every firstborn of the Egyptians, wherever they was, not only in Egypt, to show that he's in control of the world. You remember we done a show on that. But here there is a message for us. The message was that obviously on that night, certain people are supposed to die from old age, sickness, whatever you want to call it. Sorry? Oh, you want me to move? Sorry, the, 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 the camera, sorry. I forgot about the camera for one second. So, certain people were supposed to die on that night. Akadosh Baruch Hu told the angel of dead, today, it's a day off for you, it's a public holiday. It's a public holiday for you. Today you're not working, and why? Because if the Egyptian will see that other people die, not only the firstborn, <coughs> maybe some of the Jewish people get their time to die. They were sick, they was old, whatever the case is, we don't know. Akadosh Baruch Hu told the angel of dead on that night and Leila said there, today you're free. You can go home. Today you're not working. And that's what Hazal come to tell us. That the miracle was when HaKadosh Baruch Hu brought the plague of the firstborn, but only from the Egyptian. No other nation down that night. No other people die. 
And that's what it says, Ani velo malach. HaKadosh Baruch Hu say, Him and not the angel of death will be busy in that night. So when we read it, and when you sit in the Seder, pass that message. Why am I saying it? Because we done a show, you can look at it at the video if you have time, you can go to Google and you write Rabbi David Levi Yeshiva. I done a show about the night of protection. The night of protection speak about Lela Seder. And you'll see the miracle that happened before Pesach with Avraham Avinu, let's start, until Pesach night. Let's continue one more, actually two more. Yeah, we have time for two more. Let's do two more. Here we see we're going to move on. And then it says, Rabbi Yossi Aglili Omer, Me'ayin Shelaku HaMitzrim BeMitzrayim Eser Makot. Here we see that there is a mahluket among the sages. How many plagues the Egyptians got in Egypt? What difference does it make to us if they got 10? Or like Rabbi Akiva say in the end, that they got 250. What difference does it make? They got 10 plagues. They got 40, they got 50. Rabbi Akiva said, no. They got 250 plagues, 250 diseases, sickness, whatever you want to call it. Why? So Hazal explained that here we see something extraordinary. To understand that, we have to go first to Sefer Shmot. In Sefer Shmot, in Parashat Beshalah, in chapter 28, 15, sorry, 15, in verse 26, Hazal, HaKadosh Baruch Hu said to the Jewish people, Vekol ha-mahala asher samti b'mitzrayim lo asim alecha. HaKadosh Baruch Hu told us, and give us a guarantee, all those plagues, all those sickness, all of those diseases that are brought on an Egyptian, I'm not going to bring on you. So here we see that the sages have a mahloket. Everyone understand what's a mahloket? Mahloket is a dispute between one each other. And each one tried to raise the amount of the plagues that HaKadosh Baruch Hu brought an Egyptian. Why? The Mepharshim explain because our sages wanted to save us as much less to receive plague or diseases or sickness. So it's much more plagues that they received in Egypt that mean that we as a Jewish people are not going to receive all of those. And that's why we see that there is a dispute between the sages, how many plagues, how many diseases HaKadosh Baruch Hu brought on the Egyptian in Egypt. Any question? No. Let's do the last one. And the, yes, Stephen. Akon here? That's what Rabbi Akiva said. And on the sea, they received 250 plagues. The last one that I'm going to do, and I gather we say, there's a chapter that we say, that the unleavened bread that we're eating, Al Shuma. We ask, why do we eat the unleavened bread? And why decide to bring it? So on the pshat of the dvarim, Rabotai, there is something very extraordinary. Hazal tells us that the main reason that we're eating matzah and Pesach, you all know, because the, no? The dough of Bnei Israel didn't have a chance to leaven, to rise. That's on the pshat. Everyone understand what's the pshat? The normal understanding. But there is something more important. And I saw a commentary of Hazal, and I'm going to bring to, and I'll tell you why I decided to end up with that. Because I heard many commentaries, you know, we're eating card books on Pesach. Did you hear that? People laughing on the matzah. Rabotai, when we eat the matzah, you're going to hear now remedies or MLM. When a people eat matzah and Pesach, if they eat it with joy, with simcha, with enjoying, what remedy they can have? 
And then you tell me how you're going to eat the matzah this year. So Hazal tell us, and I'm going to bring the Zohar, that the Zohar say that the person that eat matzah and Pesach with joy and happiness, build in himself the emunah. What does it mean, emunah? The faith. The faith in HaKadosh Baruch Hu he built. That means in the power of eating the matzah and Pesach, I say only in Pesach, you build the Muna in yourself. Not only that, Hazal say that the person that eat matzah, this is a cure for sickness. In the power of the matzah, there is a cure for sickness. For people that are sick. But you have to believe. Rabbi Abraham Hamawi, he born 180 years ago in Syria. Just to give you an idea, in Syria, but today it's been almost finished by Bashir al-Assad, that was a great Jewish community there. And Rabbi Abraham Hamawi wrote the book called Beta Behira. What does it mean, Beta Behira? The Chosen House. And in his book, he say like this, and he given us guarantee. He given us seven guarantee, seven rabotai, eminent seven remedies. Whoever eat matzah and pesach the simcha, that's what he gonna get. And he say like this: the first one, a person that eat matzah and pesach the simcha, nitzal mikol minet sarot. Every problem that he have, eat the matzah with simcha, no more tzoros. I want to see one year that's going to lift up his hand and tell me that he doesn't have tzoros. Huh? No one, huh? So eat the matzah and then we'll speak next year. The second one, in the merit of eating the matzah, With happiness and joys, he merit to get to the world to come, the Olam Abba. The third one, Lerfua, he bring in the Zohar. The fourth one, he said that it will help you to conquer the evil inclination. Oh, each one of us have plenty evil inclination. And each one know exactly what I'm referring to, because each one have his own evil inclination. The fifth one is metzila mitviah. If you eat matzah with simcha, you have a guarantee for a year that you're not going to drown in a sea. That's the merit of the matzah. The sixth thing, korea, no, I read it properly. Akadosh Baruch Hu korea alo gzar dino. The Almighty will tear the judgment against him on Rosh Hashanah. Who doesn't want it? That you eat matzah and Pesach, the simcha, Rosh Hashanah, Kadosh Baruch Hu, tear your, all your judgment against you. Who doesn't want it? The last one, a guarantee, Shaloi Nazek Kol Hashanah. No hijack, no robbery. Who doesn't want it today? And by Ezrat Hashem, Rabotai, I would like to bless you all. Just before, if anyone didn't sell his hametz, please come to me after that. We'll do a Kenyan and we'll sell your hametz. We'll fill up and then I'll give it to the Bedin. Please, God, when it's the time, just before Pesach. So those of you that didn't sell the hametz, please come to me after the show. But I would like to bless all of you that you should have Ha Kasher V'Sameach. That, please God, in that merit of that night, we'll see Mashiach Tzitkenu Bimera Be'amenu Amen Ken Yiratzon.